Xbox has grown the number of their internal studio account from 6 in 2017 to 23 in 2023. The growth here is pretty significant, and it aligns with Microsoft's clear refocus on gaming and their goals to make it a pillar of this company. This studio base is also slated to grow even more depending on how the Activision Blizzard deal shakes out. But for now, Xbox has a very strong and very diverse collection of first-party developers. The team at Xbox Era is very excited about the future of these studios, and wanted to share the excitement with all of you. We narrowed the studios down from 23 to 10 by collecting votes from the staff, but to be clear, these are not necessarily the 10 we think are the best, but rather which studios we're most excited to see more from under the Xbox umbrella. Also keep in mind that the following list is in no particular order. Now without further ado, let's dive in. Playground Games Starting off the list is a studio everyone here should be familiar with. Playground Games is UK-based and began their journey in 2012 with the very first Forza Horizon game. The studio was founded by industry veterans Ralph Fulton, Gavin Rayburn, and Trevor Williams, all whom worked together at Codemasters, the renowned racing studio famous for Grid, Formula One, and the Dirt franchises. Playground worked closely with Microsoft on the Horizon series for a number of years before they were acquired in 2018. This series propelled them into the limelight, and their latest game, Forza Horizon 5, is often regarded as one of the best racing games ever made. Playground is known for their painstaking attention to detail, eye-popping graphical fidelity, and open-world prowess. The team at Xbox Era is incredibly excited to see the same studio attempt to transfer their mastery to another open-world series as they tackle the upcoming Fable reboot. Now, Fable means a lot to the Xbox brand. The original trilogy provided an incredibly unique fantasy role-playing series for the platform during the 2000s. The series is very British, which makes sense considering the original developers, Lionhead Studios, were located just outside of London during their near 20-year run. The humor, mannerisms, and overall style found in Fable isn't what we see often anywhere else among RPGs, so it is incredibly important that any newcomers tackling the franchise understand this. Luckily, Playground Games should be up to this task, as they reside in Leamington Spa, England. Any additional concerns that the humor may be lost on a new studio should have all been squashed after the announcement trailer, which really did seem to understand the whimsical nature of the Fable franchise. Based on what we've seen Playground Games do for many years on the Forza Horizon series, alongside their theoretical understanding of the charm of Fable, we have high hopes that the studio will be able to knock it out of the park and we can't wait to see our first true look at the game when the team is finally ready to show it off. Machine Games Machine Games was founded in 2009 by several former Starbreeze Studios employees. Now, Starbreeze was best known for the Chronicles of Riddick and The Darkness, meaning the brand new studio of ex-employees had a built-in reputation for first-person excellence. After failing to gain traction with a number of publishers on game pitches, they agreed to develop the reboot of the Wolfenstein franchise for Bethesda Softworks in July of 2010. That November, they were acquired by Zenimax and would go on to be the new home of Wolfenstein with 2014's The New Order. The New Order's take is a Wolfenstein world in which BJ Blazkowicz never single-handedly stops the Nazi regime and is instead knocked into a catatonic state after suffering severe injuries and witnessing the death of his squadmates. He regains consciousness in 1960, and after escaping the asylum he finds himself in, he's informed that the Nazis defeated the Allies more than a decade ago. He then vows to destroy this New World Order and the player sets off on a blistering, frenetic, and explosive campaign that continues forward in the subsequent spin-offs and sequel. Machine Games' take on Wolfenstein goes to great lengths to capture the same gritty personality of the older titles with tight and exhilarating FPS gameplay. Now fast forward to 2021, where after a plethora of Wolfenstein titles, a short teaser trailer for a new Indiana Jones game was released by Bethesda. As it came to a close, it was revealed that none other than Machine Games was at the helm. In partnership with Lucasfilm Games, Machine Games is bringing yet another Nazi-hating, adventure-loving star to an Xbox near you. While little is known about it at the moment, Todd Howard has gone on record saying that he feels that no one else has the storytelling capabilities that the machine's game does to bring the whip wielder to life in a new medium. We also know that this title, featuring a completely original story, will bring about a wholly unique genre mashup to its gameplay. We can't wait to see more and experience what life for Indy was like at the peak of his globe-trotting career. The future for Machine Games is bright, and to say that we're excited for what's in store is certainly an understatement. With both Indiana Jones and a rumored Wolfenstein 3 on their hands, it's going to be tough waiting to see what this recently acquired Xbox studio can do. Bethesda Game Studios 
Bethesda Game Studios has a long history of working alongside Xbox on their many role-playing games. The Elder Scrolls III, Morrowind, was one of the first major Western RPGs on the Xbox platform, and Bethesda worked closely with Microsoft to make sure the game worked on the console. That game would remain a console exclusive and became one of the most recognizable games of the first Xbox generation. Oblivion launched within the first five months of the Xbox 360's lifespan, and while only a timed exclusive, was intrinsically tied to Microsoft's most successful generation. Later in the same generation, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim launches on all consoles, but DLC launches first on Xbox. With Fallout 4, Bethesda heavily tied the game's marketing to the Xbox One, and even launched long-requested console mod support first on Xbox. This decades-long partnership between BGS and Microsoft culminated in Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda's parent company, Zenimax, in 2020, ultimately tying the knot for what has been nearly 20 years working together. It's 2023 now, and that means it's the year of Starfield, the highly anticipated space role-playing game that could define the generation for Xbox. It is not a stretch to say that Starfield is the most important new IP for Xbox since Halo Combat Evolved started at all more than two decades ago. While we don't know for sure how the game will be perceived yet, it has all the markings of a landmark event in gaming that could completely shake the foundations of the industry. These are the kinds of games Microsoft have been searching for since the 360 generation, and Bethesda Game Studios is the perfect studio to deliver them for the Xbox platform. We're extremely excited to see how Xbox and the studio can benefit from each other going forward and what comes of this new partnership. Head of Xbox Phil Spencer has already declared that he wants Starfield to be the most played Bethesda Game Studios game ever, even while skipping out on PlayStation consoles. This means it'll need a combination of Microsoft's reach, Game Pass, and cloud gaming to achieve that goal. Now, BGS head Todd Howard has recently claimed that he feels pressure to deliver on the Xbox platform, as he knows Starfield can be a platform seller. It's clear that both sides understand the importance of holding up their end of the bargain, and that can lead to greatness if all things fall into place. We will ultimately see how things go when Starfield releases this year, but we're optimistic that it will be the beginnings of a truly special partnership that will lead to incredible things for the Xbox platform. The Coalition The Coalition is one of Xbox's most overlooked champions in their arsenal of growing first-party studios, being both incredibly proficient in game development and masters of the Unreal Engine technology. Let's go into their history a little bit. They were first tasked with taking on the mantle responsibility for the Gears franchise after Microsoft acquired the IP from Epic Games back in 2014. They started by remastering the original Gears of War. Fans rejoiced and applauded the Coalition for this beautiful and faithful remastering of the beloved classic, with extra story content previously only available on the now defunct Games for Windows Live PC version. The following year, fans were revving their lancers in the first original sequel created from the grounds up, Gears of War 4. It was a visual masterpiece, much like its predecessors before it, with a new story and familiar faces it was clear the series was in capable hands. In 2018, we get our first look at Gears 5, dropping the Of War from the title. The game featured rich, detailed environments that raised doubts about how it would look and run on the aging hardware of the Xbox One. In 2019, the game releases to both critical and fan praise, squashing all those doubts leading up to the launch. The single-player campaign now followed Kate Diaz from the previous game, a strong-willed but troubled character on a path searching for answers to her vision she'd been having. Creating an emotionally gripping story, the campaign expanded to include a couple semi-open world segments, with some optional side content and weapon customization, which meant the player could choose to engage with these new features or focus solely on the story missions in a classic Gears fashion. A refreshing change, all in all, which many fans old and new welcomed for the long-running series. The multiplayer finally felt refined and balanced, as the Gears meta has a high learning curve, which can deter new players from sticking around. But for veteran fans, it felt like the Coalition figured out the secret formula that kept fans coming back for more in the original games. Gears 5 comes and goes, and then Hivebusters, a standalone story expansion, launches a year later in December 2020, putting us in the shoes of Scorpio Squad, a trio first featured in the escape mode of the previous game. It was an instant hit among fans for its beautiful and lush environments, as well as its tightly crafted story, which many to be considered to be better than the main campaign. The Coalition have proven with each entry that they can both listen to fan feedback and still push the series in new directions. In 2021, it was revealed that the Coalition helped co-develop the impressive Unreal Engine 5 playable tech demo, The Matrix Awakens, for next-gen consoles. The Coalition also presented a jaw-dropping test demo in 2022 called The Cavern, using UE5 to show off movie-quality assets running in real time. As for what they're up to now, we have little in terms of official news, but there are rumors abound. One of which was reported by Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb, who mentioned that the Coalition is working on a new but smaller IP before they're all hands on deck for the development of Gears 6, as a way to get used to the engine. Grubb says, It will still take some time, but it's going to be a small offshoot that doesn't necessarily involve Gears, but a way for them to get accustomed to this new toolset that they're going to be working with. Is this an upcoming game, or was it one of the tech demos they worked on? 
Considering it's just a rumor, well, time will tell. Gear 6 may not be shown for a while, but we are incredibly excited to see what the studio can do with UE5 as well as maybe the rumored new IP. The Coalition stands as one of the most talented yet often forgotten studios within Xbox. As a new generation unfolds, we hope to see them truly turn heads and gain the spotlight they deserve. Arcane Studios Simply put, Arcane have made some of the best games in the industry over the last decade, but still have only rarely hit that massive wide appeal. It's hard to pinpoint exactly why that is, but a mix of their games being niche immersive sims, being difficult to market, and maybe a bit of bad luck have made Arcane Studios a critical darling without the widespread commercial success to match. Arcane have not made a bad game in their 10 plus year history, starting with the Dishonored series, then Prey, and then the recently released Deathloop. Dishonored is often considered the best immersive sim series in modern times, while Prey is often praised as the best System Shock spiritual successor to ever release. A death loop felt like a culmination of years of learning into a truly unique time loop game, and their next title, Redfall, sees Arcane expand the immersive sim genre to open world and optional co-op. Arcane Studios are separated into two teams, Arcane Austin and Arcane Leon. The team started making their own separate projects when Leon tackled Dishonored 2, while Austin developed Prey. A similar pattern is now occurring, with the recently released Deathloop being developed by Leon, while the Xbox exclusive Redfall is being made by Austin. It's not a stretch to say that Redfall should be Arcane's most played game by a decent margin. The power of Game Pass matching Xbox's first party marketing push means it'll be downloaded by millions. It's exciting to consider the possibilities of Arcane reaching a built in audience with Game Pass. Under Microsoft, Arcane can now make the games they want to without succumbing to the need to sell their games to a broader audience. This is incredibly exciting for both Arcane and fans alike and we are very much looking forward to the experiences they'll be able to craft under the Xbox banner. Rare We create the kind of games the world doesn't have. This sentence is front and center on Rare's website, and when you look at the studio's history, truer words couldn't be written. Rare began their journey primarily developing for Nintendo consoles, and during that time made some of the most iconic games in the industry. From Battletoads, to Killer Instinct, to Goldeneye, to Banjo-Kazooie and Perfect Dark, Rare has defined themselves as one of the best studios of all time. It was this pedigree that gained Microsoft's interest and they were acquired in 2002. Early on, they continued their success, with games like Conquer, Live and Reloaded, Cameo, Viva Pinata and more. Then, during the early 2010s, they focused on the Kinect, leaving many fans frustrated that such an illustrious studio was stuck, making games for an optional add-on device. There was widespread sentiment during this time that the old Rare was gone and Microsoft were wasting what was once one of the most imaginative and innovative studios in the industry. Then, in 2018, right around the time Microsoft was beginning to seriously reinvest in the brand, Sea of Thieves released. Though sadly to mediocre reviews, mainly for a lack of content. There was clearly a good idea there, but the game just needed more. And more it got. Since then, Rare has added a massive amount of content to the game, making it one of the most successful new IPs of the last generation, yet often still ignored in media circles. It's had more than 30 million players since launch, making it an undeniable success for this legendary studio and likely their most played game ever. Rare also has another game in development, Everwild, which was announced in 2019 and has been MIA for quite some time. Reports have surfaced in recent years, suggesting that the game has been internally rebooted as the team searches for the right design for this magical looking endeavor. We don't know much about Everwild, only that it's been in development for many years and that the game seems to have a focus on the bond between humans and animals. Reports suggest that it's looking at a 2024 release at the earliest, meaning we may still be waiting just a while longer. While it is disappointing that Everwild is taking so long to release, we are willing to be patient with the team. We are proved themselves with Sea of Thieves and we are confident that the team will be able to deliver once the pieces fall into place. Xbox of old may have given up on Sea of Thieves when it underperformed out of the gate, and may have even scrapped Everwild after so long in the oven. Ultimately, we're excited about Rare's future because of Microsoft's newfound commitment to giving the studios what they need to complete their visions. Rare is a unique one, and they should be given everything they ask for in order to fulfill their mission of making games that the world doesn't have. The Initiative The Initiative, more than any other studio within the ever-expanding portfolio of Xbox Studios, is under a microscope as they are fully grown and built to deliver quality games for the Xbox platform. This Santa Monica studio was announced in 2018 on the largest stage in gaming and was an emphatic announcement that Microsoft was serious about investing in the industry. Led by industry veteran Daryl Gallagher, who may be best known for helping lead the Tomb Raider reboot in 2013, the initiative began acquiring incredible talent from some of the most recognizable studios in gaming. This star-studded team slowly grew for years as many wondered what they would decide to make. 
Rumors began circulating that the team was working on Perfect Dark, and in 2020, the initiative made their official debut with the announcement of a Perfect Dark reboot at the Game Awards. Since that announcement, we've had reports saying that the team has gone through a massive overhaul, causing some concern and definitely a lot of confusion as to what is happening within this budding studio. The reports of a staff overhaul came shortly after the initiative announced that they had brought on Crystal Dynamics, known for the work on Tomb Raider, to help co-develop the game. This announcement brought mixed emotions as well, as it was unclear why this move happened. What has become clear over the past few years is that more and more games will be built with multiple teams and studios as games become more complex. We won't know until Perfect Dark is delivered, but it may prove to be a vital move for the game, as Crystal Dynamics has a solid history of delivering titles and may provide expertise crucial to helping a brand new studio. So why exactly are we excited about the studio, considering all the unknowns and variables? Even with the questionable roster change and partnerships, we're excited to see Perfect Dark modernized and ushered into a new generation. Little is known about the game, other than that it'll be a first-person spy shooter with a focus on player physicality and gadgets. The game sounds unique, and we want to see what this unproven studio can cook up on their first go around, and are willing to be optimistic that the teams working on the game will deliver something special. Obsidian Entertainment Obsidian is recognized as one of the industry's top developers for Western RPGs based on a diverse array of games the studio has developed since it was formed almost two decades ago. Ask an RPG enthusiast what existing franchise first comes to mind when they mention Obsidian, and you're likely to get many different answers. This acclaimed studio's first efforts were to fill in the large shoes of Bioware, which left sequels to Knights of the Old Republic and Neverwinter Nights up for grabs as they went on to create Mass Effect. After Obsidian successfully delivered those games, they showed the ability to create their own IP with the cult classic Alpha Protocol. Following that, they would once again prove that they could not only handle the expectations that came with an established IP, but exceed them with Fallout New Vegas and South Park The Stick of Truth. To this day, New Vegas is mentioned in the conversation among hardcore RPG gamers as the best Fallout game, and The Stick of Truth remains one of the best examples of established media making a quality transition to gaming while remaining faithful to the source material. More recently, the teams at Obsidian have once again developed original IPs and despite modest budgets, have all been generally well received. As we look into their portfolio, you'll be hard pressed to find a more diverse output of games over a two decade span that is consistently praised by critics and fans alike. While most of their games would be classified as Western RPGs, they vary considerably in scope, themes, gameplay mechanics, and tone. The only distinguishing trend is that they are consistently hailed for quality writing and thoughtful game design. Now, if there's been a consistent thorn in the side of Obsidian, as they've worked with numerous partners, it's that they've often been handcuffed by strict timelines and budgets. Fallout, New Vegas, and Knights of the Old Republic 2 were two games famously known for short, rushed development cycles. More recently, games like The Outer Worlds, Pillars of Eternity, Grounded, and Pentiment were developed on budgets far smaller than you'd expect from a proven and well-established studio, who successfully handled larger projects. Now as a Microsoft first-party studio, the handcuffs are off. Their teams have bulked up, and we're expecting this generation to be Obsidian Unleashed. The first example we should see from their newly empowered studio is Avowed. Originally revealed in 2020, all that's been made official is that Avowed is set in the Pillars of Eternity universe and is a first-person RPG featuring magic and swords. At initial glance, it gives heavy Skyrim vibes. What excites us, however, is that Obsidian's original IP all have unique styles of their own. The Pillars universe is deep with lore and gives the Avowed team a foundation to expand on. Obsidian's previous forays into the first-person RPG template were Fallout New Vegas and Outer Worlds, both highlighted for branching narratives and diversity of playstyle. If Obsidian can bring both of those elements into a bigger, more ambitious game while finally having the time and resources to do their best, we're expecting something amazing when Avowed is finally released on Xbox and PC. Ninja Theory Few teams strive for perfection like Ninja Theory. Their painstaking attention to detail and focus on macro and micro details make them some of the best craftsmen in the gaming industry. They've had an interesting journey throughout their existence, starting with their first game, an Xbox exclusive in 2003, Kung Fu Chaos, which has met with middling reviews. They'd go on to make Heavenly Sword in 2007, and their ambitions to become one of the best developers in the world was made clear. There were ideas to make the game into a franchise, with spin-offs, an eventual film, and more. These ambitions never came to fruition, but the confidence remained as they went on to make Enslaved Odyssey to the West and DMC Devil May Cry, two very well-received third-person action-adventure games. The next few years saw Ninja Theory support other games and make nothing of their own. That is, until 2017, when they truly stamped their spot in the industry by releasing Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Self-described as independent AAA, Ninja Theory took a small team and created one of the best-looking and best-sounding games of the 8th generation of consoles. The game is a true cinematic experience, a game that is thrown around a lot today, but Ninja Theory managed to pull it off. Microsoft clearly took note of this and acquired the studio in 2018, leading to today where Ninja Theory is seemingly on the cusp of releasing Hellblade 2 which has absolutely dropped Jaws every time it's been shown. 
Many Xbox fans and critics have clamored for the company to release more cinematic, third-person, over-the-shoulder action adventure games. With Ninja Theory, Microsoft arguably has one of the best in the business at making just these. We're excited to see what this team can build with the full backing of Microsoft and the time to build the game they want to make. We expect Hellblade 2 to deliver in spades, and their profile may quickly rise to one of the best studios in the world if the game succeeds. Outside of Hellblade 2, the team is working on Project Mara, a real-world and grounded representation of mental terror. Not much else is known about it, but it looks absolutely gorgeous and also completely terrifying. We hope to see more of this game soon too. With Hellblade 2 and Project Mara, we believe Ninja Theory can define themselves as an industry-leading studio. They have all the talent and ambition in the world and should have the freedom under Xbox to achieve their goals. In Exile Entertainment Closing off this list is a studio Brian Fargo published in 2003, In Exile Entertainment. Prior to that, he ran Interplay for nearly two decades, where he published Bioware's first games, including Baldur's Gate, assisted Blizzard's founders in establishing their company and gave them their first contracts, published the first games from the team that would eventually go on to form Obsidian Entertainment, and was one of two producers on the very first Fallout game. It's difficult to properly convey the excitement about what a studio like In Exile can produce today without first understanding where they came from. You could argue that its founder, Brian Fargo, is one of the grand poppies of Western RPGs, with early connections to some of the most iconic Western studios and industry talent of all time. When Microsoft purchased In Exile in 2018, Fargo was so excited that he cancelled retirement and started recruiting. Fargo's connections and new sales pitch have already landed notable hires, including the former World of Warcraft lead producer. This newly forming AAA team will likely boast considerable experience and talent once fully established. While nothing has been officially revealed about what InXL has been working on, some sleuthing around job posting and other hints gives us a general idea of the scope and game type. InXL's bigger project will be a AAA, Unreal Engine 5 first-person action RPG containing powerful, tactile weapons and unique combat abilities. InXL has pitched to developers that this is a very ambitious new license, which aims to renew the RPG genre. Altogether, what that summates to is that InXL is important to swing for the fences under Microsoft. When you factor how good the studio has already been with limited resources, it's hard to temper enthusiasm now that they have the extra time, money, and talent. In Exile has multiple studios and teams, and in 2020, one of them released the very good Wasteland 3. This game is praised for its creative writing, dynamic systems, and player agency that allowed gamers to affect multiple storyline outcomes based on their choices. All this was accomplished despite a double-A budget working on a previous-gen version of the Unity game engine. How does In Exile's expertise with dynamic game design and player agency transfer to AAA gaming? What does a studio, whose people have been connected to the best for the past few decades, mean by ambition to renew the RPG genre? What can the studio who's already done well with modest resources and technology accomplish with a lot more? We're extremely optimistic that the answers to these questions mean that Brian Fargo and the talent at InXL can achieve their magnum opus this generation. And that's it, that's all 10 studios. Let us know what you thought, and please comment if you agree with our choices, disagree with them, if you're excited about an Xbox studio we didn't talk about, please let us know which and why. And if you want to see more content like this from the channel, please let us know that as well. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already.